which is what is it and what were some of the experiences, whether good or bad, great or painful, that led you to develop the style you now have in leadership? I feel that my leadership styles from the beginning have been um, very forceful. That's what I, I feel like I learned that I was very much, you know, wanting to lead by um, not so much by example, but you know, this way or you know, the highway. And now, I guess because I'm whatever it is that's happened to me that I've gone through something that doesn't feel good anymore, and I've seen the effect that it can have on people. It doesn't encourage them. It doesn't, you know, improve them by, you know, as quickly or, you know, that they have this buy-in, that they're part of the change too. So I have, I'm starting to learn a gentler approach. And it's feeling better to watch. It's still difficult. I still want to go in there sometimes and be like, this is not okay with me, you know? <laughs> How dare you, it's my company, you know? And um, <laughs> like, you know, I just want to spin my head around, but I know that's not going to work. <laughs> it's not going to work, and I don't want to be that person anymore, so, and I want my company to grow. So for me to have it grow, i got to let go and learn how to have this, you know, different approach, more professional approach. I'm getting good coaches around me. And um, he's in the room, so he's going to be glad to hear this. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's my thing. Thank you. In terms of uh, my leadership, one of the things I recognized quickly is I wanted people smarter than me around me in areas that either I had no interest in or really no aptitude. So um, I tried to hire complementary people, but as we know, sometimes they can drive us up the wall. <laughs> <laughs> um, but one of the things that I, I began to do um, early on, I've, I've had my company for 30 years now, is I'd ask every employee regularly, what's one thing I'm doing right mm -hmm. and what's one thing I'm doing wrong? And I wanted them to tell me the truth because we can only, we only have a limited view of our impact on others and, and they're gonna see the world differently. And so to consistently get feedback, whether it's from a board, whether it's from your employees, uh, whether it's from your mentors, your coach, um, it, it helps us see, see things that otherwise we wouldn't. And then we can, we can uh, correct and make adjustments accordingly. Something I learned many years ago was uh, from, a, from a mentor, actually. It was a male. Um, and he said, your EQ is always going to be more important than your IQ. Mm -hmm. And when I was in college, so it was longer than a few years ago, but um, when I was in college, I didn't fully understand that at the time because I was from a background that believed if you worked really hard, you produced the very best that you could, everybody would just respect that and appreciate that and things would just turn out great. Well, I competed on The Apprentice and realized that that has absolutely no bearing. And <laughs> you think that when you go and you do a very good job that the rest of your team will be there to support you and that people around you will see that you're smart and you're talented. And that's not necessarily the case. That's the reason why it makes good television is everybody thinks that you were horrible, no matter how good you do. And actually, sometimes when you're better, they think they want to bring you down even more. So what I learned is you that- You must have gotten A's in school. <laughs> <laughs> That smile gives it away. Yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, so my point is um, learning about emotional management, learning how to manage yourself, mm -hmm. learning how to interact and work with other people, that has been a lifelong process for me. I noticed that you know, my brother was an athlete, played team sports. I was a competitor. I was a baton twirler, actually. And as a twirler, you are an, it's like a gymnast. You are responsible for yourself. So I didn't learn to play in the sandbox. So I learned that this is how it's going to be done, and that's how I expected other people to receive information. And I have learned that I go so much further when I go together with other people. And so learning my management style of, you know, I wrote this book called Skirts in the Boardroom. It's right here. But I have a, I have a chapter on leadership on emotional intelligence where you, you figure out what's the color skirt that you need to wear for this day. Some days I have to wear a red skirt. When I'm dealing with a six foot eight tight end from the Arizona Cardinals, and he's doing something that's going to not only reflect badly on him, or in, in, but me and my company as well, some days it's time for me to wear a red skirt. Other days, though, it's OK for me to wear my pink skirt. Other days, I can wear my beige or my orange skirt. So understanding what your natural tendencies are, but understanding the full range of emotions are given to you for a reason, just learning how to manage them appropriately for the situation, 
that's really what helps us to succeed. And so I, I have um, multiple, pers multiple color personality disorder, where <laughs> it depends on the day and what is needed. But that's really what, I think that's how women are anyway. We know we have to adapt and we have to adjust. I always thought of my leadership style to be a benign, benign dictatorship. <laughs> and what I mean by that is that um, I will give you certain leeways, but at the end there's certain parameters I am not going to let you get out of. I also have learned over the time, as you all will know, I'm in the steel and construction business, so most of my employees are males. And at the beginning, it was very difficult for them to accept that I was the boss. So just by the nature of where I was, I had to be extremely assertive and kind of dictatorial in the sense that uh, oh, you're going to go here or else. Over time, as, uh, as my workforce uh, was more accepting of the fact that I am the boss, I'm the owner, and you know, I have learned that there are different people that react to different styles. There are people that uh, I will actually uh, ask their input, you know, I have this situation, I already know where I want to go, but I'm not telling them that. I'm just telling them, I have this situation, how do you think we can work with it? And then they will come around and eventually they get to where I need to go. There are others that I just tell them, hey, there, here, this is what you have to do. They respond to that, they, that's what they want. So I really think that at the end of the day, you have to learn that different people are going to react differently and one size does not fit all. I do believe that uh, leading by example is one thing I do like to do. I always have had the feeling that in my company there is nothing that is beneath me that if there's a garbage can that needs to be emptied and I'm the only person there, I will do it and I expect the same of all my employees. So there's nothing that's degrading or denigrating or below anybody. So, I mean, that's basically the way that I handle leadership in my businesses. That's some good stuff. I, I a firm believer in leading by example when culture is concerned. Being a directive leader in emergencies and treating people how they need to be treated and led in times that aren't emergencies. So, the, all those things were demonstrated here, which is great.